Hi, I'm Johnny from ultimatepapermache.com and little Chimpo here is going to help me with this video. I would like to respond to a lot of the comments that I've gotten on the series I'm doing on my new experiment, whether or not I can sell art online. And I told you in my last one that I'm not going to be selling my paper mache sculptures and I gave you the numbers that explain why I don't want to do that. I did get a lot of feedback from people who told me how I could go ahead and sell the sculptures maybe by charging more money, being better at marketing, um, reproducing them so that I could do them faster, all of which are really good advice. I'm still not going to do it though. Now I want to kind of share more about my reasoning for not uh, selling the sculptures. Um, not that you shouldn't, but just that I shouldn't. And I want to do that because this whole point <laughs> Of, of starting this experiment in the first place was to be able to find out if it worked or not and to have something to share with you guys just in case you were thinking about starting your own business. So if I don't tell you all of my reasons for making a decision, then it's really not very fair. You know, I mean, it, it, it isn't a complete picture. So I wanted to go ahead and fill in the blanks just a little bit. Now the first thing that I noticed and it was a really emotional response, um, not something I thought about or did on purpose, but when I started thinking about putting my sculptures in a box and mailing them away to somebody, no matter how much money I was going to get back, my first reaction is, no, <laughs> mine. I have two reasons for making the sculptures that you've seen on my blog at ultimatepapermache.com. The first reason is that I'm kind of obsessed with animals and I love having a house that's completely filled up with animal art. And I could not have afforded to do that if I had to buy this work from somebody else. I mean, especially if they were worth 1500 bucks a piece, like you guys keep telling me they are. Um, even at $400, I still couldn't afford to fill up my house with wildlife art. And I really like having animals in my house. It makes me feel good. If I make one and I spend all the time to get really involved in it to, like this guy, I actually did him over twice. Um, I put everything I could into getting a, a, a face that I wanted to live with. Um, it's not perfect. His eyeballs aren't quite looking in the same direction, <laughs> for instance, his ears are weird. So it's not a perfect sculpture, but He's somebody that I actually enjoy seeing every day, and if I, if I put the same amount of time and effort into a new sculpture, I would like it just as much, and I would be just as possessive and greedy and still not want to put him in a box and let somebody else have him. So that's, that's the first reason. Totally irrational. I can't help it. Now, I did say that there were two reasons why I make the sculptures. Uh, the first one, obviously, so I can keep them. But the second reason is that if I don't make the sculptures, I wouldn't have anything to put on ultimatepapermache.com. Now, since I do have a whole house full of sculptures, some people think that I would just be able to put the ones I already have on an online store if I was willing to let him go, which I'm not. But um, even if I wanted to, that's really not going to work because this is a used sculpture. This, this guy has been thrown on the floor by one cat or another at least twice. I've had him, like I said, I've had him for at least five years and, you know, he's a used sculpture. You have to make new ones if you're going to build a business around your art. Now that wouldn't be true if, it, if I made paintings and they were up safely on the wall. Maybe I could get away with selling some of these, maybe. So, obviously... <laughs> so... <laughs> If I did sell sculptures and I did make them, and if I was willing to let somebody else have them after, after they were made, then there's two things that I have a problem with. The first thing is that I wouldn't be able to put them out where my cat could knock them on the floor, like she does everything else I own. I just don't have the kind of house where I can have little precious things around that won't get wrecked because I like living with animals and some of them actually move around and knock things on the floor. So I would have to dedicate a whole closet for my inventory and keep it locked up so that nobody else could get in and destroy it. I don't really want to do that because I have a really small house. I don't really have the space for it. I don't also have the space for a shipping department where I would be able to keep all my boxes, all my um, bubble wrap, all the things that you would need in order to ship things safely and make sure that they would get where they're going without breaking. You need space for that. I have a small house and I can't do it. So that's a really important thing for me. 
The other thing, as far as doing an experiment goes, is that I want to find out as fast as possible if it's going to work or not. If I made sculptures to sell in my new business, and if I can only make one or two a month, which is true, and I've got the documentation to prove it, then it's going to take me at least six months before I have even enough inventory to build an online store. I've been doing a lot of research and, and a lot of it has come from people who sell on Etsy. One thing that people who actually make money selling their art on Etsy tell you, I mean every single one of them will say this, if you have just one thing that you're going to put on your store, people won't buy it because they need, they need to see that inventory. The same thing is true if you were to walk into a store out on Main Street. If they're selling books and they've only got two, you're going to walk out the door and you're going to go down the street to another bookstore that actually has something that you might want. You just don't expect a store to have just one or two things in it. So you need an inventory, even on an Etsy page. You need to have that inventory just to build up the trust so that people will know that if they ever want another one, they can come back. Um, they want to know that this isn't the only thing you've ever made. It's just important to put that inventory up there. If I sold the sculptures, I wouldn't even be able to start building my website for another probably six months because I'm so slow and I would have to make all these things. Now a lot of you in the comments on my last video suggested that I should make molds for my work and that way I'd be able to reproduce them more quickly. and. If I could make them faster, then I'd be able to make that wage that I was looking for in order to make it into a real business. That's actually not a bad idea for somebody who likes remaking things. I don't. I actually really enjoy it when somebody writes to me and, and says, Hey, I really like that elephant you've got on your website. Will you make me one? I'm, I'm really happy when I get to say, No, I don't want to. But I put all the instructions in a video out there and you can make your own. Or you can go to the local like a high school art teacher and ask them to make it for you instead. I really like doing that because I don't want to make another one. Once I made a chimp, for instance, I don't want to make another chimp just like him. That would not be fun for me. But it is fun for an awful lot of people. And if it is fun for you, then that would be something that you might want to consider. The reproductions really don't take as much time. Most of the people on Etsy that I see that are selling paper mache that's been made in molds are using one piece molds just of the face and putting them on the wall and that works they're also making small ones they're not making gigantic things like this they're making little ones that would take a small box all these things are really important to think about ahead of time but it may be something that you would really like to do and you might want to consider doing it um, also if you make smaller work I, I tend not to but if you do you would be able to produce the inventory for your your website or your Etsy page a lot faster and that would make a really big difference. I considered making large ones and selling them in furniture stores. I, I would just think it would be so much fun to make a life-sized baby giraffe. Make him laying down so that you don't have to worry about him falling over on those crazy legs. But um, and, the, and the elephant for instance, they'd be great in a high-end furniture store. But when I started really thinking it through, I started thinking about what would be required in order to get that to work. And the first thing that came to mind was those little tags that you see on, uh, on every piece of furniture you buy, basically telling you that that piece complies with regulations, which means that there are regulations that you have to consider. I don't know what they are. I don't know if paper mache would be allowed. I, I just don't know what the rules are. And I haven't done any research to find out. If you want to do it, you definitely want to consider those regulations though because you can get an awful lot of trouble if you start selling in that kind of venue and you're not doing it right. If it turns out that paper mache is perfectly okay and no matter how giant it is in a furniture store then you have to start making your molds. Really big life-size baby giraffe mold is going to be probably three or four hundred dollars. It's a major investment. You're going to have to have more than one <laughs> We're talking money here. Um, I just can't afford it. That's, that's a lot of capital. And I'm also having to consider the fact that paper mache is so slow. The reason that they do large paper mache sculptures in Mexico, and most people don't sell mass produced paper mache in really big sizes here, is that it, it just doesn't come out um, financially. It just doesn't work. It just takes too much time 
once you figure out how to do it, then actually putting the paper mache in those molds takes a lot of skill, it takes a lot of time, and it's the sort of work that is usually done in countries where the wages are a lot lower. I don't want to make those wages because I have to pay mortgage here in the United States, so I can't actually, you know, if I'm going to set up a business, I have to set it up so that it actually works here. You'd probably be talking about making resin sculptures instead. But then, if you start talking about resins, and if you hire anybody to help you out, you're talking about even more regulations because, um, because you have to have uh, the proper ventilation and the proper safety equipment and stuff. I don't know, it's, it's just, it's not for me. <laughs> but I would think it would be really cool if I only got to do the actual sculpting and somebody else did all the work, that would be fine. But it, for me to have to do all of it, no. So that's all I have for you today. Um, I'm hoping that if you are thinking about doing your own business, that you, you also will go through this whole mental image thing because there's some parts of it that you might not want to do. Look at the space you have in the house. Uh, imagine how the other people in your family, uh, even the pets in my case, are going to react. And then since you're in daydream mode already because you're looking at all those pieces and seeing if they're going to fit in or not, as soon as you come up against a roadblock and says, okay, that one, that, that little bit of my new business isn't going to work out for me, you've already got your imagination hat on <laughs> so you can find a workaround for it before you actually get your business out in the real world where it's going to be really hard to make changes. So um, that's all I have. Like I said, that's all I have for you today. I keep yammering on after I say that, so, so now I'm going to stop. Um, I'm going to go finish my website. Hopefully by Wednesday, I've got my fingers crossed, I'll actually be able to show you my new website and what I'm selling, and I'll uh, explain at that point why I chose that particular product to make, and I'll tell you how I'm going to try selling it with the, the website that I've got and all the pieces that I'm putting together to make that whole thing function. So in the meantime, go have fun making something. There's a whole lot of really good videos on my channel of how to make sculptures. Uh, if you don't see what you want there, I've got over 400 tutorials on my website, ultimatepapermache.com. While you're there, drop by the Daily Sculptors page and see what everybody else is making. That You just be blown away with the really cool stuff people are coming up with. And while you're there, say hi. <laughs> I'll see you. UltimatePapermache.com.